Hey guys, um, I'm just chatting with Kodak to try and learn how to use this camera better for you guys. A um, few of you have asked me to put a picture of myself on the on the blog, and uh, I said, "Why? I have pictures, action shots. That's how I like to remember myself." But in lieu of putting a picture on, I'm going to do this video. Maybe I'll do more videos. Maybe I'll do lots of videos if the time comes. Uh, honestly, uh, sorry for not posting for a while, but there's really never been nothing to post about. Gosh, you know how I feel about the bowl season. The, you know, the postseason in college football right now is a joke. So I haven't even watched. I watched uh, TCU and uh, Wisconsin. What a game. Great game. Great win for the little guy, if you will. But, you know, now TCU is going to be in the Big East and the AQ, and they'll win that conference every year or be close uh, <clears throat> so I haven't posted anything until now because everybody wants to know how I feel about the Brandon Doman thing you know and Robert uh, being let go or asked to resign or whatever um, we saw that one coming okay uh, I think we talked enough about you know hearing some of the things about Robert being awfully stubborn and you know I told you you know in the old days gosh it was called a game by committee I mean literally that's how it was in the old days and nowadays everybody all these offensive coordinators have to have full control of the offense the quarterback can not audible I mean that's the way it's gotten and uh, it's really sad to see I mean I love watching Peyton Manning call a game that's he's an old throwback quarterback Okay, you get suggestions in his ear, but he he's the one out there. He sees what they're doing, and he makes the adjustments. That's how we used to play it. Oh, my gosh. I think I wrote in one of my blogs, you know, when I was with Jim McMahon my sophomore year, which was my first year starting, man, we were never in the play that was called. <laughs> you know, I'll give you 75% of the time we audibled. Jeez, I'd love to look at it. It might be more. You know, the fact is, you know, we were the guys out there playing. You know, we knew what was going right. We knew what we could do, you know, who we could take advantage of. Uh, and the coaches, there's one thing about Lavelle, man. Uh, let me tell you something about the one thing that I will always respect about Lavelle, as you could probably hear my garbage man out front, sorry. <laughs> and my, my wife who's videoing this is laughing. But anyway, um, the one thing about Lavelle, Lavelle just hired good people. Lavelle ran the show only in the respect of who uh, he recruited and who was signed, whether we went for it on fourth down or punted on fourth down or kicked a field goal on fourth down, okay? He hired good defensive coordinators, good offensive coordinators, and handed them a playbook and said, this is what you do. And every time somebody left, a new guy came in and he handed them the same dang playbook. I still have the playbook. And it would still, I could take that playbook right now Take it down there, and I could light it up. Okay, it was that solid. You know, we created the passing game. <laughs> Literally, BYU created the college throwing game. And is credited with some of the things that they do in the NFL, or did in the NFL. I mean, everything changes. It's all cyclical, and someday it'll come back, I promise you. But, <clears throat> here's the deal. They let go of Robert, because Robert... Uh, you know, just wasn't getting it done. I could see that. I mean, I could see that coming, you know, for a while. Uh, he came from Texas Tech, and Mike Leach and his, uh, Mike Leach, I guess is his name, uh, his uh, style of, you know, four and five wide receivers, and uh, Robert tried to, you know, do that with BYU. But what you guys have to understand is we are a different breed down there at BYU. We cannot do what everybody else in the country wants to do. Okay, you have to understand about football guys, coaches. They see something brand new and everybody jumps on board. Okay, you know, uh, that's what happens. Okay, and then somebody figures out how to stop it and then they change. Okay, I remember in my day it was the Bears 46 defense. Man, nobody could do anything against it until. They sat down and analyzed it and started figuring out how it was, you know, designed, and then it's gone, okay? Uh, we have a special type of athlete that we recruit at BYU. 
They're big offensive linemen who can pass block. We can get any quarterback in the nation that can sling the ball around the field. Okay? We get good, quick receivers with sure hands. Okay, and I'm being very gentle here. We don't get a lot of speed at BYU. Um, <clears throat> so we have to play to that strength. Okay? But you don't have to have a lot of speed to stretch the field vertically and widen the field horizontally. Okay? You just need to know how to take advantage of it. Um, so what we were trying to do with Robert just can't be done with the talent that we have. Okay? I'm not saying that we aren't talented people. When you get an Austin Collie at BYU, that is an anomaly. Okay? In my day, it was Danny Plater. Okay? I don't know if you remember that name, but that kid could flat run for a white guy. <laughs> and don't, you know, don't get me wrong. But, uh, you know, we had Adam Haysburg. Now, he could run, but he couldn't adjust real well to what we had to do on the fly. Um, he did some things uh, after I was gone, but... Uh, the point I'm saying is we have to get back to doing what BYU does best, and that's throw the ball. Now, I heard somebody, yes, the reason today you're getting this is I sat in a guy's office for over a half hour because he wanted my opinion on, you know, the, the hiring of Brandon Dolman. Uh, he says, you know, Brandon's come out and said he's going to throw the ball around, but he's going to set it up with the run. Okay, I am totally, totally on the other end of the spectrum, guys, of that. Okay? BYU doesn't get those types of backs. Even Jamal Willis, who I think is the best back they've had there, okay, really couldn't do it in the NFL because they're just not that type of back. Okay? I don't believe BYU can set up anything with the run. Okay? We gotta throw it around every down. I'm telling you. My senior year, okay, and yeah, I'm gonna to I'm gonna tout our team from back in 1983 but our senior year we set a, a record for total offense per game at over 585 yards a game at that time it was a record okay guys we averaged over 200 yards a game rushing with guys like Casey Tiamalo, Wayman Hamilton, Bill McNabb, uh, Eddie Stinnett these guys weren't great running backs okay but the point was, everybody knew that we were going to throw on every down. Okay, that's what our first option was going to be. Okay, so they lined up to rush the passer. Okay, they're in full sprint mode. And what do we do? We change up by running the little draw trap every once in a while, and we're putting up 200 yards rushing a game. Okay, that's what happens. Now we've got email going off or text going off but how is Brandon gonna do I don't know until I see it until I see what he's gonna do my point is guys we got to get back to using what we have at BOU as far as talent structure we're always gonna play good defense uh, bend but not break with Bronco I'm telling you man the guy the guy was the difference in the last half of the season okay had they been able to put up some points um, you know, things would have been different. Um, I don't remember, gosh, the last time, you know, I, I think there was a record going that started while I was down there that BYU was throwing, you know, three touchdown passes a game for, you know, 500 games in a row or something. But, uh, you know, Broncos got it going defensively. We just got to figure out, you know, what to do offensively. And I, can, I know what to do. So... Brandon Doman, um, if he's as bright as he's, you know, they say he is, that's a start. But let's see what happens, you know, when he gets out in battle. Um, <clears throat> and you know what? My advice to any guy, any young guy, is, you know, be a, uh, malleable. If that's a word, you know, flexible. You know, listen to, you know, you got a kid, Jay Keeps, is going to be a, he's going to put up some numbers. You guys will be surprised. Well, maybe you won't if they let him do it. You know, teach him the game. He's the, he's the, you know, the second or co-offensive coordinator on the field. You know, when in my day it was Jim McMahon and Steve Young. Okay, you know, coaches came to us and asked us about our opinion. I mean, they they wanted our input before the game, during the game, after the game. So, uh, but.
we got to throw it around. I don't want to hear any more of this garbage about we got to run the ball. Okay, we can't run the ball and win games. Okay, we may be able to run the ball and go six and six, but that's you know those days. No, no, no. We got to get back to just lighten it up and uh, yeah, bring the excitement back. So, but the last thing that I want to to address before I run out of time is come on, let's get off. I've heard people say, oh, Brandon is the head coach in waiting. Okay, what? You know, and that Bronco should have known more about what was going on on the offense and been involved in making more of these calls. And You know what? That's garbage, guys. You know, Bronco is a great defensive coordinator and he's a great head coach. I mean, I, I thank Bronco, you know, the first time I met him for bringing back the tradition. You know, and he's opened his arm to us ex-players, aren't you know, uh, that's unfair. That Bronco should have nothing to be blamed about. Because guess what? Robert and I was already in place when they hired Bronco. I mean, Robert and I was the guy. Okay. Yeah, Bronco didn't have any, you know, any say in that. Uh, now you can see that he's <laughs> somebody was wrong. Okay. Um, so to you know, to to blame Bronco for anything. Let me tell you a story real quick, and I've said this to some people. Um, I played under Lavelle, okay? And the greatest man I've ever met. Uh, Lavelle knew very, very little, and I'm giving him cre more credit than due, probably, about our offense. He just knew to win, we had to throw the ball. And he just said, go do it. But I'll tell you, one time, it was my sophomore year, Ted Tolmer, offensive coordinator, Jim McMahon, senior year, we have a timeout in a crucial game, and we're on the sideline, just a couple, you know, the re receivers and quarterbacks, and we're discussing a play, you know, what should we call on this critical third down. And uh, you all remember Jim, he was quite a flamboyant and, I don't know, what do you call him? He was quite, quite, quite colorful. Anyway, in the middle, he stops everything, and he looks at Lavelle, and he says, Lavelle, what do you think we should do? And Lavelle says, just run one of them out things. <laughs> That's all he knew, you know? What I'm telling you guys is, is Bronco just needs to get people in place that are his. Give them carte blanche to go do and make the tough game decisions. He doesn't have to know what's going on on offense, how it's run. He just needs to know that he's got a guy that can make the calls in the right situation. So I'm, I, I'm tired of listening to people rag on Bronco. Bronco is a heck of a defensive coordinator, and he needs to stay there until he can find somebody that does what he does. I mean, I love it. Uh, offensively, let's get back to what we used to do. Literally get back to what we used to do. Get out of the shotgun, put two backs in the backfield, and let's get her going. And I, like I said, anybody want it, I got it. Playbook's out in my garage right now. Uh, I could probably create about half of it from memory, but that's my opinion. Okay, so thanks for watching. Hey, there's a place to post at the bottom. Comments, man. I want to hear some comments. You know, if you don't agree with what I'm saying, you know, that's great. I, I know that I'm right, but that's okay. I like to get into arguments a little bit. So thanks for uh, watching me. That's my rant, and uh, I rest my case. See ya.